So, it's another day of fun-filled mining adventure with Reed and Rodney and some friend, I don't know his name yet, but we'll be hearing it pretty quick. And uh, I'm not mining yet. It's daylight. So I decided to pull over here at Lake Wildwood Spillway. Pretty cool place. And uh, just kind of shoot the opening shot for fun and we'll see how it goes from here. I'm running a little early. So, well, that's my fault. I get up at the crack of dawn, slap it around a little bit and head out. <laughs> Well, we're going to demo this uh, Thomas Creek sluice box finally. This sluice box was basically designed by uh, Andy, I think was his name, on the 49 of Mike webpage. And I helped him out, you know, to see. This is a fine gold sluice for people back east, and here we are in California. And uh, it's pretty easy to use. It's got these clips here on the bottom end. You just open them up, pull out these little pins here. I don't know if these are original pins or if Rodney changed these out. I remember him had him, something else on there. We didn't think we needed to have them on there. So he was going to change them out. And then this just lifts out of here. And it exposes, hey, you know what? This is the same exact expanded metal that I use in my box. The gold blitz. So this is the good, this is the good metal. And this is what he's using for the ripples, and you don't need anything other than this because when the gold and everything drops through, the first thing it's going to do is drop into this, uh, this screen right here. And this looks like it's about 3.30 seconds, or it's less than an eighth of an inch. I don't have it measured. And this here is obviously quarter inch, and then you've got three eighths. Because really, any gold that you're going to, you're trying to catch the fine gold, okay? And the fine gold's going to get stopped right here. It's going to drop through here, it's going to sit right down in there on those ripples, and most of your gold is going to be right in here that you're going to find. Your black sand and everything is going to stop right here, and this is what we want. Um, you could add, probably put some black matting on top to help smooth it out, but I don't see a need for it because your gold is going to just run down the sluice box, drop through these holes, and just drop right smack into the, uh, into the matting below, and it's going, to, it's going to stay there. It can't wash out. The number one reason is the majority of the flow of your river is going to be coming right down here and uh, you need a lot of water to run this thing, you know, completely and totally. And um, I don't know if I want to walk out in the river and set it up to where I have a lot of water running through here today. So what I'm going to do is the same thing I do on my gold blitz. I got this piece of uh, one inch expanded. I'm just going to sit over the top and I'm just going to run it as a grizzly. So that way it's already classified down to one inch, which is, you know, which is pretty good. You know, I don't have to classify it. Probably if I had a bigger piece, Two inch or whatever, that'd be fine. Um, I'm not going to use the super sucker today because it's in use by somebody else. But anyway, yes, from what I can see, as far as I can tell you on this sluice box, I like it. I really do. Uh, it's going to catch the gold. It has no choice but to catch the gold. So, as you can see, it sits just fine in my backpack, which carries everything. And that's all we need today. We don't need a we really don't need that one inch expanded metal, but we're gonna take it anyway. It's like 30 pounds all again. Ain't nothing. My buddy Eric wore this yesterday and he's a lot smaller than I am. So he was the one carrying everything. Okay. We're all good. So I can do whatever it takes. This is the greatest backpack I've ever had. I realize I'm demoing the sluice box 
right here. But you know what? You got to have a good backpack to haul your gear in, and this pack just can't be beat. So let's go. There it went. Oh, I think I saw him fly away. Something fly away. Still down there. He's flying right up at us. Well, this looks like a good spot. That's bedrock in here. Exposed bedrock right there. Underneath this tree. Um, this tree is so old and so broken that it's going to fall down here pretty soon. Um, I'm purposely not going to dig underneath this tree, even though we got rock right here. It's, barely being held up by the rock as it is. I'm going to go ahead and dig over there where the shovel is. We're going to put our sluice box out here in the water. Just right out here to our left. Or your right, actually. We'll see how it works. i still got the pack on and everything. It packed in just fine. This is a good, well-balanced pack. Boy, and it, what I really liked is that lip on the bottom at the end feet of the sluice where you shovel the material in. It's nice having that there because it gave me something to put inside the pack that I know is not going to cut it. Okay, there's no sharp edges because it has the, the turned up lips and everything. So as far as backpacking goes, this is a pretty nice setup. So how hard is it going to be to set the sluice box down? I don't think it's going to be hard. All we care about is the angle. Just because we want the gold to go down the center and not off to one side. You just have to have it leveled side to side, up and down. The gold's going to fall into those traps. We're not going to lose it. So. probably six feet away. So I'm using the entire length of the super sucker here plus the handle to get it out there which is why I need this rock sitting here to act as a balance. And you can see it's working really good because six feet away and being able to reach that sluice box out there in the river, uh, it's a long reach but so I'm standing in the hole. Uh, yeah, I was talking to my buddy Eric, and he goes, man, you should have shown a better picture of that arrowhead. I didn't realize we didn't get a good picture of it for you, that uh, greenstone arrowhead from the Stone Age for the Indians, which was, uh, how long ago was the Stone Age for the California Indians? Billions and millions of years ago. 
It wasn't like right before a white man came and showed a medal, you know? I mean, they had obsidian, but this area doesn't have a whole lot, so obviously that one came from, uh, you know, before they discovered obsidian anyway, and started making razor sharp arrowheads, which they had back in the other, in the Midwest, you know, they had obsidian and stuff, and up north they had obsidian, but right here there was none to be found, so they would have to trade for it. And, uh, yeah, so there's no telling how old that arrowhead was, maybe 200 years or less, 300 years. I really don't know, but it was a stone arrowhead. Yeah, I should have shown you guys a better picture of it. It was hand sharp, but it hadn't been in the river that much. It still had a good blade on it. But, uh, yeah, that was quite the find that day. That was old Jay, the kid. He found he found that arrowhead, but probably all the rest of us would just overlooked it. So, you know, it's always good to take your kids out and have them go up mine with you because they're going to find some special things that you might overlook or just flat out miss with your old blurry eyes, like what I got. Yeah, Arnold, I sure miss you as governor. I know some people say you didn't do that good of a job, but I know you did your best, you know. It was good to see you do everything you could for this state, you know, and help keep mining legal. And, you know, we were down at the uh, South Fork of the Yuba River today, first thing this morning, and we were told down there that it's not legal to sluice, use your sluice box in a uh, hands and pans area, which generally means a sluice box also. But the ranger down there was, you know, let us know for sure pretty much that we didn't want to go down there with a sluice box, so we didn't. We just went up here to the old mining claim and we're doing everything we can right here. But yeah, already, you know, Arnold, we really miss you as governor. And just want to let you know, man, you did a good job. And definitely, I hope you know Will Will whatsoever, and I know most of California, you know, owes you a, a gratitude and thanks, you know. Thanks for doing what you did for us. You tried your best. You know, I wish there was more people out there like all of us that were willing to change the laws and work for the people instead of, you know, like the environmental group trying to shut down everything and killing America, you know, and, and killing jobs, which is one of the reasons I'm down here today, you know, guys. And get rid of some of these laws that are useless that make us not want to be able to even use a sluice box in the river, you know. There's a lot of good laws out there. There's a lot of unnecessary laws out there. And you guys know more about the law than I do. All I know is I can sluice right here on my mighty thing. This year. See, I'm using the full length of the sucker tube. I got the handle on it's my shoulder in my armpit so I can lift it up and use that long of a leg. You gotta remember this was 57 inches or this is just a two part. So you're looking at over oh, five and a half feet just to right here. And I'm sitting two feet into the water but right on a rock. So I mean that makes a big difference when you got that much reach. And I can just kick back here and use a super sucker. Side rocks must have fallen out. Well, that's good enough. We'll go ahead and pan this out. I'm running out of battery for making two movies today. Oh. 
about the chair? <laughs> yeah, the chair, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's looking good. I like the way it's running. We had to kind of classify it in. Plenty of water. Nice machine. Well, the Thomas Creek paid off, man. We got probably the most gold, I guess. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't see anybody else's. But, uh, Super Sucker worked out good. Lots of lead. We got some nice little chunky pieces in here. That's it, not a whole lot, but it's in there. And this is a uh, fly poop ponderosa, so there ain't jack down here, it never has been. But uh, yeah, we did good, you know. Not a bad day. Well, that's pretty good. Look at all this fine gold in here. This is the final Thomas Creek cleanup. It's the end of the day, and our uh, motor load prospectors outing. We actually have two groups now, and uh, it turned out really good. I mean, for Ponderosa, you got fly poop gold, and I'm not the last one here. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm here, but uh, Juan's down here still too, and uh, a couple guys that are with him upstream. Successful day. I mean, a lot of guys, did, they weren't too happy with a little bit of gold they got, but they got gold. That's what counts. Um, me, I'm happy. You know, I got good gold. And I worked about three hours, and uh, it was fine, because when you come down here to Fly Poop City, you know, where the gold is really, really small and not very plentiful, you got to put it through the box in order to get it. So I use that super sucker, as you could see, really, I think I probably put twice as much material through the box, if not more, than anybody else here in half the time. So another successful trip with the super sucker. I can't say enough about that and how good it works. It's just, uh, if you uh, don't know how to make one, just look back at my video list here. and I think it's uh, gold mining with a super sucker or whatever I named it. It's in my list. Go to my playlist, my gold mining playlist, and it'll be right in there. Springtime's almost here, and I got my springtime cold, and that's usual. I mean, I did a few things. I was definitely out in the water a lot this winter, got a lot of good gold, and we're uh, making the day, and it definitely paying. So, yeah, definitely a good trip. You guys, you have a good one, and uh, good gold to you all, man. Good gold to you all.